Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to show you how to do or how to deal with seasonality in R on time series based data. And we're going to go through several phases here, several parts uh, where we're going to do, where we're going to end up in the end with data that's deseasonalized, sales data that's been deseasonalized, and we're all going to also end up with a graph like this where you'll be able to see the seasonality trending and stuff like that on your data, plus. We're going to end up with, uh, at the end, predictive analytics. Uh, we're going to have graphs where we're going to be able to predict uh, and create pr predictive models. And we're going to make a custom model. We're going to do a lot of testing, show you different models, come out with one with high accuracy. And then I'm going to show you through this whole thing how we do this and end up with uh, predictions, seasonality taken into account. We'll even test it and decide if seasonality should come back in or not. Um, this is a full-on uh, data science project, uh, so it's really cool. This is really interesting stuff, and uh, we use this all the time and very often in data science and data analysis. So uh, let me move this over here so we can see what so you can see what we're doing here. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the required libraries. If you do not have these libraries in this list, you just use this install packages piece right here, and you will put in the different name in here. Based on that. So what you do is you go through this and you've got to load in all of these different uh, libraries here. Okay, ggplot2, forecast, t-series, uh, tidyverse, rio, read excel, and zoo. Um, all you got to do is put install packages in each one of these if you don't have them. Control and enter and this is our studio and it'll pull them in for you. Make sure once you've installed them that you do run the library for them. Next, what we'll do is we'll read in the data. So let's take a look at this data. This data is Kratom sales. And uh, let's go here. This is Kratom sales from a local head shop. They sell this stuff. And I guess it's like tea or something. I don't know. I haven't used it. It's supposed to get rid of pain and pe make people think clearer, better, or whatever, something like that. So regardless, they sell this at a local head shop. And this is their sales. And they've got sales data here for 2017 and 2018. Total sales, transactions, and units. That's what we're going to be paying attention to. We're not going to be using this average or rank. That just comes with the data. We're not going to be using this. We're going to create those own our own averages, monthly averages, weekly averages, and things like that in in the uh, R anyway. So let's get out of this. Let's go back here. So you've already looked at the data. So now what we're going to do is we're going to read it in. So let's go and erase this stuff. I want to erase our environment, and I want to erase our plots. So you can see we're starting from fresh just like you are. What we're going to do is we got to have our URL where it's located. We'll enter that in, and there it is. 59 observations of seven variables in data two. And you would say, okay, that's a data frame, right? This is where we want to be. Hold on, we're going to revisit that in just a second. But first, what we want to do, we're going to start with our exploratory data analysis and cleansing. Now we have our data. And we're going to go right here. And what I want to do is I want to create a concatenated column so we can better maybe order based on that or through the columns we currently have. I want to have that option available. So what we're going to do here is we create with the paste command, we put in the first variable and the second variable. And that's the order we have it in. So if I hit control and enter, now we go back to data two and boom, there it is. Index two is our new column and it has the year and the week number next to it. Still out of order, but that's our new column that we just created. So we go back here and now if we go to this str command of data two, what do we have? It tells us something I want to see at the top. See this top line right here? It says classes it's got three of them, tibble df, tibble, and data.frame. Now, these are all different things. Now, what I want you to understand is a data frame and a tibble, are they may look the same, but they're not. They have different functionalities. So for what we're going to be doing here, I need the higher functionality of a true data frame. I don't need to have three different classes. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to use this command which is data.frame of data2, and watch what's going to happen. When I hit enter there, it doesn't show anything yet, but if I do the same str functionality here, now watch, you saw before it had three classes. Oh, now it's only got one, data.frame. That's what I want, so that's what we did here. Okay, next I have to order it, but I'm going to order it by two different columns, I'm, so it's a multi uh, multiple conditions or multivariate conditions and so what I would need to do if I was just doing it by one column it's very easy to do but when you do it by two columns you need to use indices because if you don't 
R tends to uh, blow up or have issues there, and it just doesn't show the ordering correctly. So, I mean, it's not going to error out, but it just won't give you the ordering you want. So what I've done here is I want to order by year, and then I want to order by week number. So indus 2 is year, and indus or date Y in this case, and indus 1 is the week number. So if I put data 2 ordering by data 2 indus 2 and data 2 indus 1, just like this, watch what will happen. I haven't hit enter yet, but I want to show our data. So right now it's out of order, right? 2018, 2017, 2018, 2017, so on, and the week numbers and stuff, it's all out of order. So let's go back here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this little line. It's nice when the code's already done for you. All you got to do is hit this, hit enter, and let's go back to data two. Look at that. Now it's all by year and week number. So look at that. It goes 2017. And then we got 2018s. We got seven rows of 2018 at the bottom. So let's go back here. So we have that. And we can also hit summary if we want. If we want to look at it a little bit more, we can look at the column names too. Okay. But that's what I want to see. Okay. And I could do this if I wanted to look at the column names right now. Those are column names. And what I want to do next is the client only wants 2017 data. So if I have 2016 or 2018, which I clearly have 2018 data, I need to get rid of that. So what I've got to do is I've got to run this little snippet right here, where what that does is it's subsetting. So it subsets data to based on a restriction for date Y, which is the year, equals equals, which means, so it's going to be a by area, it's going to look up based just on 2017, just like this. Now, if this was text, I'd have to put that in quotes, but I don't have to here. So it's digits, it's year, and watch. If I do this, now let's go back to date to remember. We had 2018s in there. Now we don't. See, it ends at 52. That's it. Okay, there are no 2018s. It's only 2017, so that's how that works. So we go back here. That's how we did that. Next, what we got to do is we got to make it into a time series object. Okay. So, and the reason being is we got a function called tsclean that we're going to use, which helps to clean outer liars and missing data and stuff like that. Now, it's not always going to come into play, but I want this to be an important part of our process because if it is, when we have data that has issues, tsclean will clean that up for us. Now, what I want to do is I want to run this. See this right here? So, what I'm doing is I'm running the ts function on the data2 time set or data set that we have. And what I'm doing is I'm running it on total sales. Okay. So if I run this, do we have any difference? Probably not. So let's take a look at our data. And the reason being is we weren't missing anything. So that still looks the same. We haven't changed anything there. And uh, this just created a time series object off of that. Okay. So now the actual cleansing is this one. This is where TS Clean is run. And it puts into a new column called Clean Count. So let's do that. And so if I look at this now, there's clean count. But see, as I was telling you, this is a pretty clean data set. So you'll see the value from total sales column is the same exact value as in clean count all the way down. But now if there was stuff that wasn't clean here, if there was outer liars that were really bad, if there were uh, missing data, uh, wrong data, things like that, this would be different and it would change that. Now that we have that and it's in a time series object and then it's brought back into this field, what I want to do is I want to graph the data to further see and test, even though we saw the numbers are, are the same in both columns, let's just go and take a look at it and see for ourselves. So the first, let's open this up a little bit farther so you can see it. The first line right here, this ggplot uh, right here is with the clean count. So we're using the right column, clean count, and we're using the data to data set, which is what we have. And the aesthetics are weak number versus clean count. Okay, so if I hit enter with that, I get this nice looking graph. You can pull it over here. Take a look at that. Now, remember that graph. So now if I go back here and I run the exact same thing, but the difference is this one has total sales instead of clean count. See that? Total sales, total sales instead of clean count. So let's take this and run that. Do you notice the only difference was the total sales thing here? Look at the graph. It's the exact same graph because the numbers are all the same. That's just another further test to show us that they're the exact same. Okay, we do that in data science to make sure that the uh, data is correct. All right, 
next, what I want to do is I want to get the monthly and weekly moving averages. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, right here, we have two new columns, count underscore MA, which is the moving average, and count underscore MA30, which is the 30-day or monthly moving average. So you'll see here by seven, that means that we're doing a weekly, and this means we're doing a monthly with 30. Okay, and we're doing it on the uh, total sales column. I could use, and it says right here the same thing, if there were a difference between the clean count, if there were issues there, things that had cleaned up, then I, could, I should use that one and not total sales. Being they're the same, it doesn't matter. But if they were messed up in any way, I would use the data to uh, dollar sign clean count instead of this. Okay, so let's run that. And that will give me my moving average on it, so that's not going to plot it. That just creates the moving average, so that's in our data and values and stuff like that over there. But I have this open so you can see where we're going with this. Now, next, what I want to do is I want to look and see are there any missing values now. Now, keep in mind, there weren't when we looked at it earlier, but we just added two fields or two columns to our data, right? So if I go out to our data, we just added count MA and count MA30. And look at this. Bam, bam, bam. We got all these NAs, right? So those are missing values. And they're on both the top and the bottom, right? So we've got all these missing values now. The other columns do not, but those two do. So let's go back here. And what we need to do is take a look at it again. So we looked at it there, but we can also do this. We can look at this, and this is our summary. And your summary at the very bottom of each column, if there are NAs, they will be listed under the max. See right there? Six, and this one says 30. See that? So we got 36 NAs, 30 in the MA30 column and six in the count MA column. So by looking at that, we need to fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this function called na.aggregate, and this is from the zoo package, which we loaded in earlier in the library. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace in our data2 data set and we're going to replace where, you know, wherever it needs to be, wherever it's a uh, missing number. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the moving average or the average for that column, the mean, and we're going to put it into that column. So uh, basically, it's not the moving average, it's actually the mean. So I, I meant to say mean there. But we're going to take the mean and put in that column. So what we do by running this, I'm not, I'm not going to put it back into date two because if I put it in data two, you won't really be able to see what I've done. I want to see that I want to keep the other data for comparison's sake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put into a new object here called data 2A. So what we're going to do is this whole column right here, or this whole row right here, we run this with the replace function, enter, and you will get a warning message, ignore these, and uh, unless you get an error message, which means you might have missed a line up above, like putting it into a time series data set, then it won't work for you. And then check replacement of all the NAs with the mean and the age call. So we go and we click on this. Now look at that. Summary last time, remember there was two things here that had NAs, the uh, count MA and count MA30. Well, now they don't have that anymore. Now let's go back to the actual data itself and see what happened. Well, date two stayed the same. See, that's for, so we have that for comparison's sake, so you can see. This is the original data. After we added those two columns, all the NAs in it. Now let's look at data 2A. Look at that. Now what it did was it took the column mean and put it in to fill in all those spots. And they're completely full now. So there's no NAs in there. So let's go back here. And next, what I want to do, we already did the summary. So next, what I want to do is I want to plot the original data with the NAs and the unclean data so we can look at it again. It's just a further test of this to see we already looked at it, you know, in the summary. We looked at it in the data. But now let's look at it with an actual uh, graph. So the first graph is the unclean data. So if we click on this, enter that, give it a second. Let's pull it out so you can see it. There it is. This is with the unclean data, okay? And you can see there, now obviously look at the different moving averages, okay? You'll see that um, it's missing some pieces. So like the blue is missing this side and it's missing this side. The red, which is the 30-day monthly moving average, is missing quite a bunch here and quite a bunch here. So by going to the mean of the column, 
watch what happens now we're going to go and run this one and this little it's not really that hard this code here is just ggplot we're doing lines for we've got three lines put together of the uh, sales or the clean count in this case previous was sales of the moving average this is a weekly moving average and the monthly moving average together so let's go and run this and let's pull it out now look at the difference remember the first one had the blanks in it this one takes those blanks and puts in this moving average in here the same thing with the blue see that it put the blue one has a very small because it's uh, the weekly moving average and the monthly is much larger so it puts a bigger section with the mean in there, the column they mean. And then you can see they're basically about the same, except that the previous one had the missing sections in it. This one does not. So what that's what we're going to end this part on right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go, the next video, we're going to go into decomposing the data and actually seeing the seasonality and dealing with it and removing it from our data. And seasonality, just so you know, is the areas where, so for instance, you could have, uh, outliers, you could have big events, you could have holidays, you can have trending, you can have all kinds of things, cycling, and these things will mess up your data. So if I wanted to look at a campaign, I want campaign data, and I want to see how it's doing, uh, and I really want to see how it did, I have to remove seasonality to do that, because if I don't remove the seasonality, the problem is what looks great may not have been that great because behind the scenes underneath those numbers I might might be hidden uh, how the uh, campaign you know is overlapping with two holidays in there or marketing ran another campaign outside this campaign during that period or sales did something uh, some promotional event that we didn't know about and so it looks like this campaign did great when actual in actuality um, it may not have because that sales thing that is not going to be repeated did it. Well, so if I run this campaign again, based on data with seasonality in it, I might recommend this campaign and we might run it again and we'll see it'll bomb or, or vice versa. We don't know. So you need to remove seasonality trending and things like that. And that's what we're doing here. And we're going to do that in the next part. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please go from this one to the next one. Uh, the next part in this and uh, please check out my channel and uh, there's a lot of other great videos on data science, data analysis, Excel, all kinds of great stuff on there. R, uh, decomposing data, uh, segmentation, all kinds of great stuff. So thanks again. Please remember to watch the next video and have a great day.